Wow, what an honor and a privilege to come to you via this channel as we embark on a journey, a journey of the Holy Spirit, a journey of God, a journey that God is going to transform our lives and change us, a journey of prayer. I'd like to welcome you to Prayer Masterclass 101. Prayer Masterclass 101 is the Masterclass School of Prayer where you learn things from God and you learn how to engage in prayer. Today is the beginning and this is the first lesson of it. Okay, shall we pray together? Heavenly Father, I want to commit our relationship to you and our journey to you, O oh God. I want to pray that you please pray with us. Teach us, O oh God, that we may learn from you as we ought to pray. That our prayer lives may improve and we may all get better in Jesus' name. Thank you, precious Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now then, so I welcome you again to Prayer Masterclass 101. Pastor David Shalado is speaking to you. Now, why is this important? Prayer is one of those things that are mostly talked about in the body of Christ. But many a times, it is also very confusing. Confusing because very few people understand it. Confusing because many don't know the impact of it. Confusing because many simply don't know the wherewithal of prayer. Confusing because many talk about it. Churches talk a lot about it, but very few engage in it. And so, if prayer is this important, how come there seems to be so much confusion about it and lack of understanding? And you see, the Bible says in Hosea chapter 4, verse 6, that my people perish for lack of knowledge. So what you don't know well, you cannot appropriate. What you don't have a good understanding of, you cannot master it or therefore get the benefit of such. So our aim is to unravel this old mystery and have a look. Is there power in prayer? Does prayer have any importance at all? Does prayer make a difference? Who can pray? When can they pray? I mean, is it for special kind of people? As you go on this journey of prayer, Master Class 101, you will discover that prayer is the privilege of every child of God. Prayer is a privilege given to every child of God. And prayer is the cheapest way, the best way for you, a child of God, to communicate with your father. Before I define prayer at all, I'd like to refer you to a scripture. In Genesis chapter 4, verse 26, the first occurrence of anything called prayer in the Bible is in Genesis chapter 4, verse 26. Scripture says to us, And so, and to Seth, and to him also there was born a son, and he called his name Enos. Then men began to call upon the name of the Lord. Men began to call upon the name of the Lord. In other words, that was the first time people began to, if you like, engage in prayer. Men began to call upon the name of the Lord. So prayer, defining it in the simplest way, is simply calling upon the name of the Lord. Prayer is calling upon the name of the Lord. In Jeremiah 33 verse 3, it says, Call unto me, and I will answer you. And I will show you great and mighty things that you do not know. Jeremiah 3 verse 3. So prayer is calling upon the name of the Lord. In Genesis 26, the Bible says, He builded an altar there and called upon the name of the Lord. And he pitched his tent there and there Isaac's servants digged a well. So, when people call upon the name of the Lord, it is actually prayer. 
And if you notice carefully, Isaac engaged in that. Prayer is calling upon the name of the Lord. In Genesis chapter 12, verse 8, the Bible says, He removed from things unto a mountain on the east of Bethel, and pitched his tent, having Bethel on the west and I on the east. And there he builded an altar unto the Lord and called upon the name of the Lord. So you see, prayer is calling upon the name of the Lord. That was Father Isaac. So if you understand that, calling upon the name of the Lord, that's the simplest way to define prayer. Now the truth is this. In every culture in the world, prayer is critical to everyone. Prayer is critical in every religion. Every religion or form of faith engages in prayer in one shape or the other. But the question is to whom are they praying? Are they actually praying? Is their prayer making a difference? So first thing, don't forget, prayer is calling upon the name of the Lord. Prayer is calling upon the name of the Lord. That tells you a whole lot. Which means, number one, I must recognize there is a Lord. That means, number two, I must recognize that this Lord has a power. Number three, by implication, it means I must recognize, number one, there is a Lord. Number two, there is a Lord who has a power. Number three, I must recognize that I need help or from the Lord. Prayer is calling upon the name of the Lord. So I must recognize I need help from that Lord. Number four, it means I must have a relationship with the Lord. Now that brings a whole subject, a whole unveiling. I must have a relationship with the Lord. Remember I said prayer is communication with God, but it's calling upon the name of the Lord. I recognize there is a Lord. I recognize this Lord has capacity to answer me. I recognize I need help. Then there must be relationship with the Lord. How do you call on someone you don't know? So there must be a relationship. Now, it becomes critical to have a relationship with this Lord. Now, let, let, let's, let's look at it this way. In Psalms chapter 116, verse 17, Psalms 116, verse 17, it says, I will offer unto thee the sacrifice of thanksgiving, and we call upon the name of the Lord. Do you see? Relationship. And we call upon the name of the Lord. You don't call on someone you don't know. Listen. And the question you must then ask is, who then can call upon the name of the Lord? In Joel chapter 2 verse 32. Joel chapter 2 verse 32. The Bible says, It shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord, shall be delivered. For in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem shall be deliverance, as the Lord has said, and in the remnant whom the Lord shall call. Suddenly you realize, therefore, that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord, whosoever, therefore, prayer is open to all. Number one, calling upon the name of the Lord, Number two major point is open unto all. Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord. Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord. The Bible says, Zephaniah chapter 3, For then I will turn to the people a pure language, and they shall call upon the name of the Lord to serve him with one consent. Suddenly, you realize now, prayer is open to all and is available to as many as desire to have a relationship with the Lord and make it dynamic by calling upon the name of the Lord. Listen, in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 2, 1 Corinthians 1, 2, Bible says, Unto the church of God, which is at Corinth, to them that are sanctified in Christ Jesus, Called to be saints with all in every place. Call upon the name of Jesus Christ our Lord, both theirs and us. It says with all that in every place. So suddenly prayer is calling upon the name of the Lord, available to whosoever. And number three, who anyone can call upon the name from anywhere in the world. 
Wow. So I don't have to call upon the name of the Lord from one particular place only. I can call upon the name of the Lord from any part of the world and may find myself. Now remember this, you call upon someone who can help you. So prayer, calling upon the name of the Lord. Whosoever can call upon the name of the Lord. And wheresoever you can call upon the name of the Lord. That's so interesting. Wheresoever. So you can call upon the name of the Lord in your bed, in your room, oh yes, on the road, in your car, on a retreat, wherever you like, wheresoever you can call upon the name of the Lord. That's interesting. Number four, you can also call upon the name of the Lord whensoever. Now that becomes critical. You can call upon the name of the Lord whensoever. In other words, there is no time in the day that you can't call upon the name of the Lord. Why? The Lord neither sleeps, neither does he slumber. You see, your God is neither needs a rest. His ears are open unto our cry all of the time. And that's why if you look at our world, interestingly, our world has a 24-hour zone. So some part of the world, somebody is waking up in the morning. Some other part, somebody is going to bed. But God dwells outside of time. And therefore, you can call upon the name of the Lord whensoever. That means any time that works for you, you can call upon the name of the Lord. And his ears are attentive to your cry. His ears are attentive to our prayer. In other words, somebody can call upon the name of the Lord 6 a.m. Central Europe time. Somebody can call upon the name of the Lord 6 p.m. East Coast Eastern time in America. Somebody can call upon the name of the Lord 12 midnight somewhere else. Prayer is simply calling upon the name of the Lord whensoever. Whensoever you can call upon the name of the Lord. And so, timing becomes critical. That's why, listen, don't let anyone legislate you that you can only call upon the name of the Lord early in the morning. Yes, you can call upon him in the morning. It's important. You can also call upon him at night. You can call upon him before the day breaks. But you can call upon him at any time. Why? God is a God of all time. He's a God of all season. He neither sleeps nor slumbers. That's why it says in Jeremiah 3, verse 3, don't forget that statement. Say, call unto me and I will answer you. And I will show you great and mighty things that you don't know. That means my ears, his ears are attentive and open unto our prayers. So whenever you choose to call upon the name of the Lord, it is a vital time. Listen to me. Prayer in the simplest form is calling on the name of the Lord. I'd like you to remember that. Calling on the name of the Lord. That is in the simplest form. Whosoever can call on the name of the Lord. Thirdly, wheresoever you are in the world, you can call on the name of the Lord. In Jonah chapter 2, Jonah was in the fish of the belly. And he called, in the belly of the fish rather, and he called on the name of the Lord. You see, God answered him, wheresoever. Isn't that amazing? Some have been lions then. They call on the name of the Lord. You see, people, no matter where you're on the sick bed, you can call on the name of the Lord. Wherever you find yourself. And you can call on the name of the Lord whensoever. Whatsoever time you desire, you can call on the name of the Lord. Why? Your God's ears are attentive to your prayers. Don't forget that. Those are the four critical things for today. Whensoever. Whensoever. And number five, as I close. Howsoever. Wow. Now, if there's no English like that, write it down. Howsoever. In other words, you can call upon the name of the Lord anyhow. So some will jump. Some will shout. Some will bow their heads. Some will lift up their hands. Listen, howsoever. You see, what I want to develop on this channel in prayer masterclass is that you must know that you must come to your God as your father. 
when you are calling on him, howsoever, to, to someone prostrating is okay. To somebody else, lifting up only hands is perfect. So someone is shouting is important. To someone is meditating. To someone is conversation with God, howsoever. But the critical thing is you must be calling on the name of the Lord. That is the simplest way to define prayer. God bless you. In Jesus' name, amen.